What's up gamers, today is going to be all about the start of your master mode journey. More specifically, we will be looking at M3 and M5 since these are the most common floors to start on. So let's get straight to the point. First up, I want to talk about the clearing phase in general, since it's very similar on all floors and a vital part of master mode. In today's meta, the easiest build is just to run an archer build, so you'll want to have a high strength and crit damage set with the designated gold or diamond head paired with a terminator. When it comes to pets, you only really have four good choices, being the Yeti, Blaze pet with Frozen Blaze armor, Ender Dragon, and the Golden Dragon. These pets can be sorted very well by EHP and damage output, with the Yeti offering the most EHP and the least damage, while the G-Drag offers the most damage and the least EHP. For Iron Man, the Blaze and Yeti pets are relatively easy to get, and the G-Drag just, yeah, it takes a bit of time, but also very doable. The E-Drag, on the other hand, can be a lot harder since RNG can really screw you over here. My recommendation for Iron Man players is just to get the Blaze pet and the Frozen Blaze armor using minions, and this combo will easily get you to M5, and maybe even beyond that, who knows. Master mode clearing is a lot harder because mobs do so much more damage, and this is why you want to only ever see your enemies in front of you. This means that you know where the damage is coming from, so you can easily avoid it if necessary, and this also gives you room to quickly strafe backwards if taking too much damage. Be careful with Skeletors though, since they tend to spawn behind you a lot. For this, it's good to have high speed, which you can easily get from speed tunings. Now, clearing mobs is one thing, but minis are a whole completely different thing. For these, it's always good to have a Wither Cloak sword in your hotbar, since the Lost Adventurer and the Angry Archaeologist both start shooting bows at you that do massive amounts of damage. <laughs> the only other minion that doesn't shoot a bow at you will teleport behind you, before you can even see it, and will cut you into pieces before you can even react. Therefore the name Shadow Assassin. So what do we learn from this? Well, if you enter a room where you know there's a mini, you always want to have a Wither Cloak activated just in case. Now I want to quickly talk about the Shadow Assassin in further detail because these seem to be the hardest mini to kill in the beginning, but with the right technique they can be the easiest by far. Once you walk in a room with your Wither Cloak activated and you hear the Shadow Assassin teleport you, you want to strafe backwards a bit and quickly disable the Wither Cloak sword and then immediately eye spray it so you can shoot it safely. If it's not dead after 5 seconds, Wither Cloak again and repeat the same thing. Now, since an eye spray is relatively hard to get on Iron Man and very RNG based, you can also use a gyrokinetic wand instead, but it would be a lot harder to control the Shadow Assassin and you'd have to kill it in the first 5 seconds. With the basics out of the way, let's move on to M3. This floor you want to start at around Kata 34 to 35, and typically you would run it as 4 Berserkers and 1 Archer, or, well, if your party has a skill issue, then you replace 1 Berserker for a tank. I mentioned earlier that generally you want to have a Terminator in Master Mode, but for Iron Man this can be a bit tricky to get, and in this case I would make the exception that you can try with a Juju instead. It won't by far be as good as a term, but in M3 it still gets the job done. M3 is also such a cool floor to start since you only need S rank and therefore there's a lot of room for mistakes, so don't be scared. The only thing you should be scared about though is your bank account, because trust me when I say this, but with all the recoms, with all the stars and all the skulls, this floor eats up millions. When it comes to the boss fight here, you want the archer to damage the Chaos Guardians while all the other players split up between the rest of the Guardians. For the archer it's important to kill the Guardian, the Chaos Guardian, before it can discharge and then one-shot everyone near it. In the next phase, where the professor spawns as a person, you want to either fire freeze it in place and everyone shoots at it, or alternatively you can ice spray it and then with a knockback 2 weapon you can knock it into this corner, where then you would all DPS it. The last stage where the professor is in guardian form shouldn't require a lot of explanation, literally just shoot it. Eventually you will get bored of this floor and then you want to move on to M5. This floor requires around kata 38 to 39 and typically you run this as 3 berserkers, 1 archer and 1 tank. Your new arch nemesis will now be a fell, because these things are annoying as hell. If you don't one shot them, try to ice spray them as they spawn or gyro them together. Really, don't be scared to use your gyro, it helps a lot in the clear, especially if you pair it with a gauntlet of contagion and implosion belt. If you used a Juju and M3, now is the time to upgrade to a Terminator. 
the Judo just doesn't compete anymore, especially if you start this floor as Kata 38. Here you want to obviously get an S plus rank as well, so you can't have that much room for mistakes anymore. The boss fight here is very easy and simple though, except if you're the archer. This is because the archer has the fantastic job of knocking the right livid into the portal. Here you want to ice spray the correct livid and just pray that it doesn't go crazy while knocking it to the closest portal using a knockback 2 weapon. The three berserkers just wait at the portal or go to the other portal if that's where the archer brings the correct livid and then just fire everything they have at it. And the tank is just supposed to keep the archer safe and alive while they try to KB the right livid. If you want to be a full on chad though, You'll also assist the archer by ice spraying the correct livid for them in case they missed an ice spray or two. Now to quickly summarize this, here are some important points I want you to take away from this. First of all, it is easy to start with an archer build. Please don't start using a mage build at Kata 35, it's not gonna go well. Secondly, always walk in a room with a wither cloak activated just in case there's a shadow assassin that TPs to you or a lost adventurer drawing a bow. You don't want that to happen. Next, also never have mobs behind you, always in front of you, so you can see where the damage is coming from and you can strafe backwards if in danger. And lastly, M3 is a great place to learn because of its large room for mistakes. This brings me to the end of this video though. If it helped you, feel free to like and subscribe. And if it didn't, well, too bad, the dislike button doesn't do anything anymore. Let me know in the comments if you still have unanswered questions, I'm happy to help. And otherwise, see you in the next video. Goodbye. <laughs>